Okay, we're in section 2.3 now. We're going to be talking about functions. But before we can talk about functions, and just to remind you guys, what is the root word of functions? Mm -hmm. I highlighted it for you. Yeah. Now, when we talk about functions, we first have to talk about what a relation is. And a relation is a set of ordered pairs. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Okay. A set is the same thing as a collection. It's just a big group, a big ensemble of ordered pairs. <coughs> so we can have something as simple as this. The ordered pairs, negative 1, comma 2, 3, 5, <coughs> 0, negative 4, um, negative 1, 0 and 6, 5. This is a relation. That's all it is. It's just a collection of ordered pairs. In this case, we have five elements, five items, uh, and they're each an ordered pair. We could have something that is a little bit more complicated. This is another example of a relation. How many ordered pairs make up this relation? Uh, a lot, right? They are a lot, the infinite number of points, right? Remember, between any two points are an infinite number of points. So there's, there's an infinite number of pieces there. I'm not going to be able to list all of them out. So we have a graph here. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about graphs. Now, with these, we like to talk about things called the domain and range. Remember the domain? The domain is the set of x values used. And the range is what? It's the set of y values that are used in your picture. That's all it is. Okay. Domain is x and the range is y. We did this back in 0310. This is not new. What was that? Well, think what's alphabetical? What comes first? Domain, then range. X comes before y. Don't what? Tell you what, if you've got comments and you want to make, you want to say something, why don't you do it on the YouTube channel? That's where I ignore everybody. Awesome. That's what I'm all about. So if I look at this guy right here, I want to talk about the domain. What is the domain for this relation that I have listed here? Negative one, three, zero, negative one, six. Okay, now when we talk about domain and range, we do have to list these guys from least to greatest. Okay. So from least to greatest, I have what? Negative 1, 0, 3, and 6. Now you may say, wait a minute. Negative 1 is used twice. I it's OK. All I need to do is say that it's used, and that's good enough for my domain. Mm -hmm. And what would you say about your range? What is the set of y values that I'm using in that first relation? Zero, four. Zero, four, zero. Negative 4, 0, two, 2, and 5. Put them in order. These are the y values that I use. Everybody is represented right here. And you see it from my domain and range. What about this curvy little guy that I have right here? What is his domain and what is his range? Lots. Say it with conviction, yes. This guy, in terms of the x values that are used, it's, it's everything. You don't see him coming to a stop. You see him going all the way from left to right. So we would say this is negative infinity to infinity. What about the range? What about those y values? Uh, it should still be the same thing. Because look, he's going all the way down, and he's going all the way up. There's no break in the action there. So for this little curved guy, it's from negative infinity to infinity. That's all real numbers, right? 
what is it when the is it the range it can't be repeated so if it's repeated well we're going to see that in just a second you think about the definition for a function oh. see this section is called functions and we just talked about a relation so that would be a function that second example well, let's see yeah, yeah. It the oh we remember stuff so glad that I passed you guys here is the definition for a function. A function is a special relation. <coughs> a function is a relation where each x in the domain, where each x in the domain is paired with only one y value in the range. So a function is a relation. That means it's still a collection or a set of ordered pairs. <coughs> but it's special in the fact that each x is paired with only one y. Each x is paired with only one y. Another way to think about it is, is this. Your domain and your range, think about your x as being your input, and your y is your output value. So what a function is saying is that if you plug in one number, how many answers should you get out? One. Just one. If you get back more than one, then it's not a function. Like on your calculator, you can type in... Let's see, if, if, if I do, you know, 7 plus 8, how many answers should I get from this guy? One. I just get one. Now, is that the only way to get 15? No, but if I try to type in 7 plus 8 again, I'm still going to get 15. This input has exactly one output value. But this output value doesn't have to be unique. This is not the only way you can get to 15. I could do 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is still 15. It's not a problem that I still get to 15. The problem would be if I were to type in 3 times 5 again and I got something other than 15. Are you with me on that? You put in one thing, you expect one thing out, not two things. Okay? Uh, even on your most basic four-function calculus, that's what you expect. Okay? Um, there are real-world examples that are functions. Okay? Like, if I say you're an X, Kelly, mm -hmm. you have a birthday, right? How many birthdays do you have? One. You have one, right? Now, you have one birthday. Mm -hmm. That relationship would describe a function. Now, are you the only person who has your birthday? No. Okay, there may yeah. even be somebody in this classroom <laughs> who has your same birthday. I look at both of my boys. Mm -hmm. They have the same birthday, but they only have one birthday. Different outcomes for each other? Well, no. If I look at my first son, he has one birthday. That's a function. That, that's a, a nice relationship. Mm -hmm. What if I said he has two birthdays? Well, he was born on October 5th, and he was also born on November 17th. What's going on there? Only half of them came out? And it, no. It does, it, that, that kind of stuff doesn't really happen. It's kind of weird. But It's weird that it doesn't happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said it's weird, period. Okay. That kind of stuff doesn't happen. Not that it's weird that it doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to clarify which uh, way you thought was weird. Yes, it's, it's understanding where you're, okay, punctuation. Now, his birthday, he's not the only one who has that birthday. Okay, mm -hmm. all I have to do to show you that birthdays are not unique is I need to get 367 people in a room. If I get 367 people in one room, I guarantee you that two people will have the same birthday. 100% guarantee. <laughs> you don't believe me? Yeah, I believe you. Not with 100% guarantee. Why not? There were at most 366 days what in a if year. One of them was oh, yeah. born on leap year. <laughs> That's why I said 367. Well, that whole half thing, you know? <laughs> the half thing. That whole half thing. You yes, you were born half yeah, on one day, half, half on another day. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go back and look at what I have with my examples. Let's look at this first guy. 
does this set of ordered pairs up here, does that describe a function? Is each x paired with only one y, always and forever? No. Yes? <coughs> I'm going to disagree. Look, negative 1 is paired up with 2, right? But then later on, negative 1 is with 0. And remember my old, like, weird analogy here? Like, X's are guys and Y's are the women. So this dude's hooking up with this chick. <laughs> All right. But she goes off to work. He's a lazy bum who doesn't work. And then <laughs> she's got a roommate. Now, that's not good. This, he's called a cheater. This is not a function, right? That's messed up. Now, notice what this is not saying, Kimberly. This is saying that guys can't cheat. This guy right here. I can say is not a function. I'm saying guys can't cheat. What am I not saying? That they can't cheat? No, no, no. I'm not saying yeah, that the girls can't women. cheat. Oh, so the girls can cheat? Right now they can. In functions, in functions, the wise or the women can cheat. Okay. Look at it, look. Oh, yeah. Three goes to five, but six goes to five. But notice. Oh. 3 only goes to 5, and 6 only goes to 5. <laughs> I think we know what kind of, I think what kind of profession 5 is in. <laughs> but it kind of goes back to, <laughs> it goes back to my graph and calculus. There's more than one way to get to 15, right? Mm -hmm. But this input has only. <laughs> 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 that means 6 is still looking for 9. <laughs> <laughs> 30 <little five>. <laughs> <laughs> So that means that 7 plus 8 is 15, 3 times 5 is 15. There's more than one way to get to that number, right? Yeah. But this is, is only paired up with one, one thing, right? Does that make sense? So. You should really change your analogy. <laughs> Especially if I'm going to be recording. Now, <laughs> this graph right here, is this a function? It is? See, when it comes to graphs, it may be more difficult to see whether or not it's a function. But there's a nice little test we have that I know some of you have already remembered. It's called the what? The vertical line test. Now, you say the horizontal line test. That will come back later, and that's going to make sure that the women aren't cheating. It's one thing to make sure that the x's don't cheat to make sure we have a function. But later on, if we also put the condition on the y's and say the y's can't cheat either, then it creates a special subset of functions called one-to-one -one functions. And with those types of functions, we can do really neat things called inverses. But that's for a later video. Come back. So, so the vertical line test says. The top function that you wrote, or yeah. all the pairs, that's not a function because. Because negative one goes to two different values. Okay. So the whole thing's not a function. Right. Okay. All you need is one person to screw it up. <laughs> now, <laughs> the vertical line test, it says a graph is that of a function. A graph is that of a function if every vertical line crosses in at most one um, crosses in at most one point. If you're going to have a function, you can draw any vertical line and the most number of points you will hit is what? One. one. So if I look back at my wavy guy that's up here, if I start drawing vertical lines up here, will I ever hit more than one point? That guy's cool, that guy's cool, and so on. It doesn't matter where I draw the vertical line, I'm only going to hit it one time, right? So this guy right here is a function. 